Soul Drinker Lightning Strike Assassin. This build does all content, has a really smooth playstyle, and can do all map mods, which saves you so much time rolling maps. It's insanely fast, tanky, and does tons of damage. I also tried to fix some of the problems that CI builds traditionally have, like mana, degen effects, and physical damage. I was able to do all the endgame content like invitations and uber bosses with this character. The new forbidden flesh and flame jewels for Shadow, which were up until recently bugged and just didn't work, give you Soul Drinker, which gives you Overleech for your energy shield. While it is a strong defensive mechanic, it also enables some other ways you can scale your damage very efficiently. It does this by letting you take advantage of anything that requires for you to be leeching at full energy shield or full life. However, it does take two jewel sockets, which, for a softcore hit build, is like a 100 crit multi. That's why we're using Nightblade, which is notorious for giving insane amounts of crit multi by itself due to how elusive effect scales the crit multi you get from it. We also get Trinity, which is like Nightblade, one of the strongest supports in the game. Actually, all our supports are really strong. Trinity gives us 30% more damage and 16% penetration. Nightblade gives us up to 450% crit multi. Energy Leech is a big chunk of leech and a 38% more multiplier since we're always leeching. And we have Overleech, which means we're almost always full ES. Awakened Wed, which is a huge 39% more multiplier. And it gives us Reflect Immunity. And Damage on Full Life is still a constant 34% more multiplier. With plenty of more damage and crit multi, we want to look for a bunch of flat damage, percent increases, and attack speed on our tree and gear. I have some pretty decent gear on my character, but it's all self-crafted. I wouldn't call it super budget, but it's mostly pretty low investment for today's standards. These gloves are pretty cool, I made them with recombinators. Conditional mods are generally a lot stronger than normal mods. Our build can take advantage of all four of them, so these gloves are pretty good. The additional strike is mandatory however, it doesn't matter where you get it, but make sure you do get it because it pretty much doubles our single target damage. Lightning Strike has a melee strike component and a projectile component which can both hit the same target. Essentially you want to target the ground near an enemy and hit them with the projectiles, and then the additional strike will auto target and hit them with the melee part. My weapon just has flat Ellie, attack speed, crit, and pen. I'm using a dagger, cause daggers are cool. They're also a lot cheaper than claws to craft. Imperial Skeen is the best base, even though it's the rune dagger. But with recombinators, they're not really that hard to craft, with fractures and whatnot. You can put spider wherever you want, I just had an open suffix here. Some accuracy would be good, crit multi is okay, but we have like 800 already from Nightblade. So you're not getting too much value out of another 30 or so. This thing is dirt cheap to make, I just got some 10 to 20 C fractured daggers, recombinated them onto the right base and then smushed them together. Then I spammed essence until I got crit and then I benchcrafted pen. The 1x benchcraft was most of the cost actually, like I didn't even bother to mining it. This ring, I just got lucky with essences and annuls. Harvest reforge attack more likely would be good too, cause that can get you attack speed and accuracy. It gives Intimidate, Flat Ellie, Wed, and Minus Mana, which brings my Lightning Strike cost down to zero with this Mage Blood Flask and Searing Exarch Implicit, which lets you do no regen and cannot leech combined. This other ring just gives me ES and Int, which gives us more ES, and Mana, which gives us more ES because of our Watcher's Eye. If I take it off, I think I lose like 900 ES. It's just Reforged Defense more common, or Dense Fossils on a Crusader ring. Mageblood gives us strength to run our determination, res, and some quality of life. It's not mandatory, just get res and strength on your gear, two minus mana cost rings, and some gain charges when hit flasks. You can run purity of elements too if you need more res, and the ailment immunity frees up some of our other gearing choices. We're also running both anger and wrath for some desperately needed flat damage. I'm using a Wrath Alls Uprising, which removes its reservation, which means you can juice it up for free. The way I have my character set up, the best anoint, damage wise at least, is actually Gladiator's Perseverance, which gives 10% attack speed and 40% increased damage. You can go Panopticon with the two Ancestral Totems, but that feels way too clunky for me. I have enough buttons to press already. 
I have to use both Bottled Faith and Vol Lightning Strike on bosses, okay? Also, they look kind of dumb. If you don't mind having to place your totems, it's actually pretty good for bursting down bosses that you can set up on, like some of the new Ubers. And if you have no problems with pressing more buttons, then attack speed when focused is good on your gloves, and focus double damage on your shield and weapon are also good options. With full setup, that's like 50 mil shaper DPS or something. Mark the Prey is usually pretty good for most builds, but we get a lot of increased damage taken on enemies already. We get 15 from Aspect of the Spider, 4 from Anomalous Ass Mark, and Divergent Mark on hit. Wait, that's the wrong one. Anyway, the Divergent version gives 5%. We have also Evil Eye on Megalomaniac and like 20% from our shocks. So the 10% additional from Mark the Prey gets beat out. This is a massive thread of hope. Honestly, I don't think it's even that worth it. We're just getting some attack speed, pen, and some aura stuff. My Watcher's Eye was pretty cheap. I think it was like 1 or 2x. Essentially, nobody uses Anger with CI. The ES recovery rate is pretty much a more multiplier on your leech rate. We also get it from an Eldritch Implicit on your chest. The clarity mod gives me like 300 ES, which is nice to have. Of course, I'm only using a level 1 clarity. We're also running precision and determination, so plenty of good mods to choose from. Our large clusters are pretty typical. We just want attack speed and increased damage. Feed the Furies, really good, since we're always leeching. I try to get that on my Megalomaniacs too, but get what you can. Essence Rush and Pressure Points are also really good options. I only need the Anger Efficiency node with my setup, but you may need the Determination one too. Megalomaniacs are really good on this build, since we don't get too much from Medium Clusters and regular Jewels. I'm running double Pressure Points here, and 7% double damage on my shield, so that's 17% double damage, which is like another 17% more multiplier. It's really consistent too, since we attack really fast. Speaking of more multipliers, we also get Frenzy Charge Generation from Elegant Hubris. I would use an Impossible Escape here if I got some other good notables. I really wanted at least 20% Ailment Avoidance along with Frenzy Charge Generation, but I spent way too many Divines already. A Trickster variant would get free Frenzy Charge Generation, but Assassin is just too good. Opportunistic gives us 25% more damage, or 20% reduced damage taken, which is essentially Fortify, during invitations like the 200% Quant feared earlier. We also get Mistwalker, which gives us 50% elusive effect which scales the crit multi from Nightblade. In fact, this actually synergizes with daggers pretty nicely since we get 40% elusive effect here and an additional 40% crit multi, which also gets scaled by our elusive effect. We are also immune to crits when we're elusive, which is always, and we're guaranteed to gain elusive on crit, which is so much nicer than the redeemer boot mod for keeping a high elusive effect in conjunction with withering step. Honestly, the build is kind of carried by elusive, it gives a bunch of chance to just straight up avoid damage, which is scaled by our elusive effect by the way, and it's also how we're getting 100% ailment avoidance. You can get up to 10% on Abyss Jewels and 20% as a Belt Enchant. Oh yeah, this jewel literally only there for Corrupted Blood and ailment avoid. Some ES flat damage rant would have been good too. We get the other 70 from our boots and shield. Alternatively, you can anoint Crystal Skin for 20% if you need it, or you can use an Impossible Escape around Elemental Equilibrium to get up to 30% and Gladiator's Perseverance, which frees up your anoint for something else, like Mark the Prey. If you can otherwise solve for ailments, there's a Belt Enchant and an Abyss Jewel that lowers enemy resistances when you wither them, which you do with Withering Step, so that would be a nice chunk of damage since we don't have too much penetration in the build. Now, you may have noticed that I have spell suppression on my energy shield gear. Again, recombinators are pretty cool. With just my shield, body armor, gloves, and one wheel on the tree, I get 100%. You can save some points too if you can get some more suppression on your gloves, boots, or helmet. All my ES gear is pretty easy to craft, 
For these, just recombinate fractured spell suppression onto a good base. Perfect fossil for 30%, then dense fossil, harvest reforged defense more common, or essence for good prefixes. A null or eldritch slam if you need to. My shield, I essenced T1% with an open prefix. I had an augment defense saved up that I was never gonna bother with selling on TFT, so I just slammed it and got literal lowest tier hybrid. After you get three good prefixes, prefixes can't be changed. Veiled Chaos, block something you don't want, then unveil, and then finish it with a benchcraft. The attributes here on my body armor are probably the best Veiled Chaos result. You need the strength for your determination, and the 35 int here gives you more ES than a 6% passive. If you want avoid elements on your body armor, you can get two ES prefixes with one empty, then either multi-mod the ailment, avoid with prefixes can't be changed, then veiled chaos and eldritch slam, or prefixes can't be changed and pray you ashling on a prefix and unveil the ailment avoid. Or if you don't want an unveiled mod, you can just benchcraft it on and finish the suffixes with eldritch currency. This helmet, just get two prefixes with dense fossils, essence, or harvest, then craft on pierce or plus one AoE for auras. I had pierce on my gloves too, but I dropped it for plus one AoE, and it doesn't really feel worse. Then finish suffixes with eldritch currency. I really needed one lightning res roll on my gear. It doesn't matter which resist you get, cause you can always use harvest to swap the element. I did that with my gloves too, since the cold temple mod is more expensive. For the helmet enchant, you want either pierce or additional projectiles on your lightning strike. Honestly, you want both of those stats, so I'm getting pierce from my helmet, and I'm getting extra projectiles from my divergent vol lightning strike. I'm only using a level 20 gem because getting a level 21 vol skill is either really expensive or kind of annoying, so I'm missing out on one projectile. Even though the gem has a bunch of built-in projectiles, getting a few more is kind of nice for your coverage because the beams get a little more spread out the farther it travels, so you kind of miss some mobs that are far away sometimes. Getting more projectiles doesn't increase the cone angle, so you kind of condense more beams in the same space. You can get mana reservation efficiency as an implicit if you want it, but this physical damage taken as a chaos mod is essentially just take 7% less physical damage since we're CI and immune to chaos damage. It can be upgraded to 8 if you're min-maxing, I guess. Our physical mitigation is actually pretty nice for a CI build. We have 25k armor, which is not too insane, but we have the helmet mod, 3% on our body armor, and 2 endurance charges for another 8%. We also just straight up get Fortify while mapping since we have Fortify linked to our whirling blades. So as long as you're whirling through mobs, you have pretty good uptime on 20 fortification, which is 20% less damage taken. For Ellie, we get 39% less elemental damage taken from our mage blood flasks. You can take Soul of Solaris too for 6% fizz reduction, chance to take 50% less area damage, and 8% reduced Ellie taken. I'm using Brian King right now, so I don't randomly get stun locked while whirling through big packs and in delve. Alternatively, you can get stun avoid as a boot enchant. For your minor god, the take no extra bleed damage while moving means you never have to worry about bleed. You can take the burning ground one too, since 100% ailment avoid doesn't work for that. But degens usually aren't that scary since we have pretty good constant recovery. All of this combined with molten shell and 8k ES pool and great recovery make this build super tanky. This is what I'm using for my boss challenges and ubers and whatnot. Oh, speaking of bosses, you probably want a white socket to put in flame dash instead of fortify because you need a blink skill in stuff like Uber Exarch. It's currently level 99, I almost never die. I'm probably taking this one to 100 at some point, but for now, I'm probably gonna try to do something with the new duelist jewels 